Somebody asked me about phase one because they're preparing for prep, using SSP and prep term one of next year. Thinking ahead. Um, think about the um, important skills that the children need before they actually start on phonics. So the phonics teaching, here's our explicit order of teaching the code, they're high frequency graphemes. Before they can do that, they need to understand that um, spoken words are created using speech sounds. And it's the phonemic awareness skills that are really important, the blending and segmenting. So at the beginning, what SSP teachers will do in the first week is not start on the phonics, obviously, because they're not ready for that. Some of the children will be, but we need to ascertain which children. So what we're going to do, lots of activities, but the most important with regards to actually teaching reading and spelling are that we introduce the visual prompts, let's say here, Pan, pants, nap, sip, tan, ant, tap, snap, pin, spin. You can hear that there's something these all have in common. They're all made up of the speech sounds, s, at, p, it, n. So not worried about what they look like, the representations of them yet. We're just thinking about, okay, if I say the word sip, let's say, what we want the children to do in that first week of prep is to be able to use the monster routine. Duck hands, s, i, p, sip. So that was segmenting, putting them in order, and then blending. Now the children are not going to all come in with great fine motor control. We could give them the cards that have got the lines, the speech sound lines. The ideal is that they're going s, i, p, sip. And obviously hardly any of them are going to be able to do this at the beginning. S, Ip, even though they'll do it very quickly. So we actually give them the speech sound lines and cards, but what we need them to be able to do is duck hand, sip, sip, choose the right number of lines. No, one, two, three, so we're starting left to right, that's why we have that for the segmenting, the ordering, but also so they're going left to right. So they're using their duck hands, the lines and the numbers, and then they're choosing the right monsters. We're not doing any phonics. So sip, Monster s at p it n. We always put them in that order so they can go back and remember and ignore that. That's for teachers so they know the phonetic symbol. Uh, forget that. Forget those. The children just look at the monsters and the monsters. They learn the action, the music. They dance to them. It's multisensory. They have fun with them and they absolutely love them. So in the early stages, the first week or so of prep, we're doing encoding s ip sip s play it s ip sip if you gave it to them and they're going to choose the right monsters in the right order so they're not going to start there they're going to start here so we're getting all those underlying foundational skills right ready for introducing the representations of the speech sounds so when we actually introduce the representations it's going to be easy but for the first week we're not thinking about that visual distraction we're just thinking about the s e So it's just phonemic awareness and oral language. That's phase one. Sip, sip. So that's encoding. When we're doing the speech to print decoding, what we're doing is we're giving them the children, we're giving the children the words already created. So actually giving them the skills and concepts ready for the phonics, but we're giving them the word. So if I tell you this is s at p i n, you read this word for me. So they're using all the skills that they're going to need for, to be able to decode, but we're not looking at the phonics, we're just looking at the monsters, the monster sounds. N, ap, nap, so segmenting and blending. And then if they're non-verbal, and they're going, but they're non-verbal, they're still telling you that they can hear those sounds and blend, because they're going to point to the right visual prompt. So we're doing this with children who have very poor speech and language skills and developing the phonemic awareness and helping them with their articulation. Because every time, every time a child is going, mm, ap, nap, they're articulating those individual speech sounds. Starting from what they know, speech, and taking a speech to print approach, makes it really logical for the children to go from the speech sounds to the representation of those speech sounds on paper, the speech sound picks.
Hey. Don't miss a page right there. <laughs> <laughs> Daisy spinning. Stan spins. Daisy spinning. Stan spins. Stan rocks. Stan rocks. There is a walking on a little horse. And let go of a dragon. Stan rocks. Stan rocks. Stan, Stan, and did I miss a page right there? Ah ha ha! No, you didn't. Stan, Stan plays. He might be playing a computer game, mummy. Yes, he is. Yeah, good job. Oh, I love you. From the rich on the broom. Stan plays, plays. Stan plays. So phase one of SSP is oral language and phonemic awareness so that when we say, oh, you know when I want to write the word nap using letters, mm, what's the picture of mm, in this word? Well, let me show you. It looks like this. Look, there's the picture of the sound, the sound this monster says. Ah, shall I show you the picture of ah in the word nap? So monster ah, here's the picture of the speech sound ah, p. There it is. So you're showing it to them. N app nap, and the brain loves learning in this way. Now also obviously phase two when we're doing um, the um, code levels, we're doing the phonics. We're also doing over 400 high frequency words, but all of those are code mapped to you you. But in bean, they're going to look at that in the purple code level, that in the green level, that in the yellow code level. E. But we don't want to wait till they get to there before they start looking at this high frequency word. And that's why not all of these high frequency words are, um, you know, a lot of these high frequency words can be easily code mapped. But we've got to think about when we're starting at duck level one, we've got to think about and and that's an easily decodable word. But the reason that's in duck level one and it's the fourth word they're introduced to is because in the green code level, we've only looked at that and that. We haven't looked at that. So we've looked at ah and mm, it's not until they come to the purple code level when they're ready that they see the d. But we've also we're already introduced it to them. So actually, they're, they're going to say, oh, I know that one already when they come to the purple code level. It all works. It all makes sense. But phase one is vital to develop the phonemic awareness. You need to learn to speak in speech sounds. You 
saw her using a speech sound puppet. What she's doing is speaking using duck hands. Use our duck hands to show the speech sounds. Oh, at. Ready? Bunny. Oh, bunny rain. Oh, look, it is a bunny rain. Piece of cheese. Cheese. It's an imaginary piece of cheese. Oh my goodness. What is under the hook at? Oh, <gasps> it's a bunny rain. Train. What was the last sound of the train? Last sound of the train. Last sound of the train. What? And who can tell their speech sound family? Who can tell their speech sound family? I know we just have a little speech. Who can? Who can do this word? Put a kit in. Are you ready? This is off. Fish. 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 Well, we have to really listen for the beginning and the end. Put it in. What about if I said fish? Fish. What about if I said put house? House. What about if I said I'm tricky now? Okay, now with your duck hands, I would like you to do this word for me. You ready? You ready? Yes. Pot. concept we're going to cover is taking pictures of speech sounds with the magic speech sound camera. It looks like I look at an I ordinary look camera from Coles, but it's not. This is the speech sound camera. So you know if you're in Coles and you see this, you can say to whoever lives in your house, that's not a camera, that's the magic speech sound camera. Even it's noise. Look at that. Do you know what this does? Yeah. When we say sounds in our words, you know how we were listening for and we might listen for ah, and we might listen for to all those sounds that we listen, the speech sounds that the child needs to be able to hear to know what those words are. If we were to take a picture with the speech sound camera, so what we'll about ready? So I'm going to take a picture. What might it look like? What might the picture look like? Let me see. Not what we're doing Let me see. What's that? away from letters so think of the smaller parts in words and when we say them we're going to take a picture a picture with a speech sound what might it look like you also need to understand about spelling with lines and numbers for ordering this just means that if I say a word like sat I need to be able to hear that it's made up of three speech sounds at so even if I don't know how to spell the word sat, I first need to be able to do lines for those speech sound picks to sit on. Sat. So they're just doing three lines. And they do the numbers because children, especially in the early years, have trouble with ordering and we want their brains to go from left to right. Just by putting one, two, three underneath, even if they can't form that one, two, three very well, it helps them understand where to start and it helps them with their placement. It's called segmenting. Have a look up there. So what sit looks like. <gasps> so now yeah. put sit, 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 sit on your line. So you need your three lines. So now you need to put the... It, the and somebody did one, two, threes three. underneath, which was brilliant. S so e now sit, put, it, put them on the right order. Put them on your line. It, it, put, it, it, put, it, put your line, it, honey. On this. It. Can you do a sit? Oh, look, it's holding it. Now. Well done. 
on, do the lines, do the numbers, and then make some choices. So, new word up there, have a look, if you're not looking. You ideally, obviously, want to start this in preschool. Sip. So you're asking the children how many sounds can you hear, find the right number of lines, and these children were already at the phonics stage, phase two. So they'd had phase one with just duck cans, lines and numbers and now they're actually making the sound pick choices using magnetic letters because they're not really ready to be writing those sound picks yet. Some of them are, but most of them aren't because they're in preschool. So we use the magnetic letters. S-I-P, sip. Oh, wow, what a good idea! He made tip instead! Okay, so some of us were able to make sip. There we go, pan. No. Who can in? How many sounds in? In. 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 Mm. Two. Yes, two. So you need the line with two. So we need the picture for it and the picture for in. In. Yes, well done. You did that so quickly. suggest the green level handbook because it's everything just dedicated to the green code level because to be honest once you've done this code level you don't really need any more handbooks because it all makes sense this is kind of a way for me to explain to you what SSP is all about once you understand how to use this the rest of it all the activities and everything are already there for you so the children just fly don't forget to get the SSP Monster Mapping app.